actually started to walk down towards the, the water there, kind of my go-to. Um, I like to you know, uh, take photos of you know, rivers and you know, things with movement, but um, I couldn't help but go past um, this scene here with the uh, mountains in the background um, and just an electricity pole in the foreground. Uh, the light's just coming over the mountain now, really nice and golden. Um, and it just looks, you know, quite simple, simple composition, but it looks quite nice. So we're gonna give this a go first uh, with the 4.5 uh, camera um, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. So let's get set up. As you can see, I'm a little bit dusty when uh, using the 4.5 camera. It's been quite a long time, so it'll be interesting to see how I go today. And the camera I'm going to be using today is the Shenhao 4x5 uh, with the Rodenstock 180mm Serenar N. Uh, 180 uh, uh, fantastic lens I've been using for a number of years now. Um, so I'm going to pop this one on now and we'll start composing the scene. So we slide it into there. And that should just come down. And then we just need to lock those in place. Okay, so make sure the lens is open. And as you can see, all the grid marks here on the back of the um, Chanel, and I'm using these ones here, so it's a panoramic scene. So I'm using these all the way to the edge. So it's a nice six by 12 centimeter panorama. I'm gonna keep it in the landscape orientation. I'm gonna take this back off now and put this one on. Okay, now just using the Minolta Spot Meter F, uh, we're just gonna meter the scene. Pretty simple one to meter. Um, it's a pretty uh, balanced exposure, so I don't think I'm gonna use any ND filters or anything like that. It's just going to be, I'm just gonna check the, um, the mountains in the background and a bit of the foreground. But given we're using Portra 400 today, I don't think it's gonna have any issues, especially if I you know, overexpose it um, just a touch. So let's do that now. So the meter reading is giving me 20, uh, eight seconds at f22 uh, so given um, I haven't used this gear in a little while I'm just out here just testing and making sure it's all still good um, I'm not too worried uh, about my exposure and, and, and my scenes and stuff like that so I'm gonna say uh, eight seconds is around about the equivalent of uh, 10 to 12 seconds uh, so we're gonna do that um, and we should be fine and there's just a little bit of pink starting in the sky now so perfect timing so given we had the lens open uh, to compose and to focus um, you just need to make sure that that is now um, closed up so we'll do that uh, we've changed it to f22 um, and we're going to use the uh, bulb setting and uh, then we'll cock the shutter so we're all ready to go and given the lens is now closed I can remove the slide at the back here so the film is now live I've attached the uh, cable release here as well, and I've just got the timer set to 12 seconds, so we're going to start that now.
Perfeito. Very important. Uh, just want to pop that back into the back of the camera now. And this will stop any issues with exposure in the film. Because if I take the back off uh, before focusing my next shot, we're going to have major issues. So as you can see, large format uh, photography really isn't for everybody. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things to consider. Uh, the focusing is slower, setting up the camera is slower. Um, it's just a whole lot more considered, but that can also be uh, the thing uh, a lot of us uh, uh, film shooters or large format in particular uh, really like about it. It's something that you really feel like you're in that creative process. Um, and it's, for me, it's, it's, it's a very, very enjoyable thing. There's nothing against digital photography. Um, you know, I'm very much in that world, uh, obviously working for Fujifilm. Um, but um, it is good to break away from that sometimes and go back to the basics, which is really a light, tight box. Um, so I guess, look, next step, uh, we need to take the back off again, put the focusing back back on, uh, refocus, uh, find a composition, and then put this back on the camera, um, uh, advance the lever, and then kind of go from there. Okay, and you can see the scene there. Just got this nice little kind of curvature in the foreground, kind of trees, and then the mountain in the background. And we're looking at about, probably about there, in terms of the composition, just coming over the mountain, because there's not much going on in the sky. So I don't see any point in really giving it too much attention. I think I might have missed an opportunity here. Look at the pinks in the, uh, in the mountains over there. So one of the aids I use to really refine my focus is one of these, it's called a loop. Um, and you put it on the back of your um, focusing screen here and you can actually just double check that everything that you've kind of focused is actually in focus. Uh, Cause some, with some of these dark, uh, large format cameras, um, you can kind of slip in and out of focus uh, pretty quickly because of the, um, uh, the depth of field. Uh, so checking the focus is always a good thing no matter what camera you're using, uh, but on this one especially. I just realized I'm kind of yet to tell you much about the uh, back I'm using today. So this is the Horseman 6x12 um, panoramic uh, adapter. So usually I'd use double darks, I don't have one with me, uh, but a full 4-5 sheet of film. Uh, whereas this one here, instead of using 4-5 sheet film, uses uh, 120 film. So your roll film uh, that you use in most of your medium format cameras. Um, so as you can see by the metal plate there, that's the size of the negative. Uh, that you end up um, dealing with, so a 6 uh, or a 56 millimeter, I think, um, by about a 120 millimeter, or just short of, I think it's about 112 or something um, long. So a really nice, um, you know, image, uh, a panorama that isn't too wide, um, but it's just enough to kind of, you know, get a little bit more in your shot um, and a really nice aspect ratio. So really keen to, to use this a little bit more. Um, and I've had this a little while, but I've not used it in a very long time. So I'm just kind of testing it out uh, as I recently brought it back from Australia. So um, uh, shot one down, uh, we've got five more in this, takes uh, six shots um, on 120 film. So my Hasselblad is usually 12. So it's just half the amount of shots. Okay, so I'm happy with the, um, the composition, uh, happy with the focusing. Uh, so again, just taking off the back and popping the Horseman back on. F22, go to F32, keep it on bulb exposure, okie dokie. Okay. okay, so it's giving me about F. 
32 at two seconds, uh, which is um, you know quite an easy exposure. So uh, we'll dial that in now, um, and we'll take our second shot because uh, I've got a feeling um, that you know we might want to you know make our way over there to get some of that light before it kind of lifts too much over the hillside there. Dark slide out there. Might just be able to see the composition there with the tree kind of in the mid ground um, and then kind of that line of trees behind it. It's just being lit up in the in the mid ground there, which is quite nice. And the water running through the scene. Looks like it's about a quarter of a second um, at F32, so let's give that a go now. And quarter of a second, F32, and copy the shutter. Okay, real quick spot meter. Um, the highlights are really starting to kind of build, um, but there's still some shadow around it, and Portra handles the highlights extremely well, so I'm not too worried about those. Uh, Kidoki. Shadow's closed. Dark slide comes out. And bolts your ankle. Okay, as you can see on the top of the um, plate here, we've got the film counter. So at the moment it's on the three shots, which is a little bit concerning because I'm pretty sure I've taken four, uh, which either means I forgot to wind on or uh, there's a winding issue. So we'll see, um, you know, why that would have happened, but it's um, quite frustrating. Um, and to wind on, you just click that in and then that then pulls it forward and you're winding twice and you'll see that it then stops on the next number. go with F22 this time and that would get us down to around about a 15 per second I reckon cock the shutter here and you can see the little red tab comes up to let you know it's cocked um, and then you better move out of the way and take the shot so we're going to pull the dark slide out now Get this fella here and
this is something I haven't actually spoken about yet, is the fact that, um, so these here can actually come off. So pulling these little pieces out, the corners, this can actually be removed. And you can then pop it like that. So you've got it in portrait orientation. And the same goes with the horseman back. You can put that in as a portrait orientation and then take a six by 20, uh, six by 24, uh, six by 12 uh, portrait shot as well. So we're gonna try one of those now. Composition number one, so just the water there leading up into the trees in the background. Um, so overall, quite nice, um, quite interesting uh, and well lit. Uh, maybe a little bit later in the day than I would have hoped, but um, it'll still look quite nice. So I've gone with the first composition. I just think, uh, and I almost forgot that I'm shooting the, um, the panorama and just had the whole 4-5 uh, screen there for the composition. Uh, so it's quite skinny, uh, but it might work. And um, so we're gonna give that one a shot now. And uh, look, uh, you know, fingers crossed. What I might also do is just um, experiment a little bit, chuck a, an ND on the front, uh, just to slow down the water and just have some nice movement in the scene as well. So let's give that a go now uh, and, uh, and see how it looks. So as you can see there, I've just popped the Benro uh, filter uh, holder on the front, uh, popped in a polarizer and also a six stop um, ND filter. Uh, so that brings the exposure time down to two seconds, uh, which should be enough just to see a nice bit of movement in the water. Hard with the filter on. Yeah. Okay, she's on bulb. Ready to go. Alrighty, thanks so much for uh, joining me this morning. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video about the Horseman 6x12 uh, panoramic adapter. Look, it's something I will be using a lot more of. Um, I do love 4-5 four, uh, photography, but sometimes using the double darks uh, can be a little bit um, kind of restricting. Uh, and this is a lot easier, quicker, and more cost-effective as well. Not having to develop and buy 4-5 and just being able to focus on 120 film. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, look, if you did enjoy the video, I'd love you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey uh, in, in, in photography and uh, everything kind of film and digital. Um, and uh, if you've got any questions about today's video, just pop them down in the comment section and I'd be happy to help you out. And uh, otherwise, I guess I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. See you soon.